different. Did you go there person. personally? No. So I have. In fact, let me give them a shout out. Josh Sigurdsson yeah. and David Stig Hansen went there individually. These are some intrepid fellows. It is a gutsy trip. Today's video is to kind of show some new axial alignment pictures of some stuff that I found while looking through Utah near the Canyonlands. And uh, uh, for example, this new Carolina Bay survey uh, shows that Clovis was bombarded by a cataclysmic event 13,000 years ago, the same time that Atlantis was taken out, right? So we now know what happened to Clovis and why they disappeared, right? The quarry fields in Tassil Najer, this is pretty important and it's a big part of the talk. I found this cool thing. These are the quarry fields outside of the Rishat structure that are like six miles long and there's the giant's quarry. I call it the giant's quarry because honestly I, I don't see anything bigger in this area. And uh, I used to think this was natural. I always say that because it's true. I thought it was beautiful. I thought nature was beautiful. But then I started to realize certain things don't occur in nature. Like, for example, a volcanic dike doesn't stop and then back up and start again. And it doesn't stop right in time before it hits another wall. And, of course, it looks like it might be going through there. But if you look at the other side, the sea shows it's actually going up as i described in the video in the interview i did with nikki there's a lot of really crazy stuff these i mean something like this 
to me, doesn't make sense. And I can go here. This is also near the Canyonlands. I, this whole area is highly suspect. And when you see something like this, a, a, it's not really a mound, but it's in the middle of this valley that was obviously from water activity. And then suddenly this mound, oh, it's this just residual. It's just, I don't believe it. And when you compare it to the stuff that's nearby. Now the Sphinx stuff, I think that this is a really good example of how fake the Sphinx is. That everything above the shoulders is a different color completely. It's an ancient concrete. And I can demonstrate this. Don't don't blame me for never having gone there. You know, I'm actually quite interested in this angle. This is a really interesting angle because you can see the, the rump is so uh, high up. And it's actually still... You, you, this is the third member right here. And the third member, in my opinion, could have been added from a separate block before they even dug this up. And uh, I've talked about that before. Um, been working on the procession of the equinox for a while and I thought I had it lined up. Then I went back into Stellarium. I just downloaded Stellarium into this computer. I hate Stellarium because it won't let you do... It takes over your whole screen. You can't turn it into a window. I think that all of these are pretty important. So I, I want to show these really quickly because I think that I, they haven't been shown enough and I want to make sure these are out there so I put all these slides out there that is Easter Island can you believe that that's Easter Island so not just the uh, the big tall statues the Maori or whatever they call them I forgot but that as well uh, Lesudu and the the dikes that I showed in the Lesudu area there's so many more you could you there'd be double this if I really went through it so one of these days, I think it's important to do at least Lesudu, but South Africa is going to be impossible because there's literally millions of lines out there. And there's apparently millions of those stone circles, Michael Tellinger says. Let's talk about the Younger Dryas Ground Zero. Okay, you've got the Carolina Bays here and here, and there's millions of them, and they're all elliptical pointing at the Great Lakes. Let's not forget that Clovis, this, this is actually not correct. The, the Clovis is right there. And that's where there's a whole bunch of hits. I think even Antonio Zamora is reluctant to go that far. But he says that the Grand Canyon's too far. But most of these slides are just from recent works. If you look at what Plato said, it's across from Spain. Don't just go straight out into the water. I mean, we've talked about this again and again. I've had to argue about this again and again. Everybody's so addicted to the mainstream narrative. Uh, I think this is an important point uh, as far as this body of sand that has gone over this flood plain here. And you can see that the sand covers the edge. I think this is important for the Rishat because it demonstrates, first of all, that shoreline on the north side and the body of water that possibly fills the whole area right here, this blue area. We have the Taman Reset Paleo River going this direction, something like that, right? I might be wrong a little bit. I might have done it wrong. I did it from memory. But then you've got what I believe are other canals serving, and then canals that are in these Adrar Plateau. I walked through that canal, and I didn't put the other canal yet that's right here that points right at the Rashat. I'll show that later, of course. But um, you see this body of water on the north side. This It was there, right? And it, how far up did it go? Um... I kind of uh, want to make sure to talk about where this place is, Planetary Valley. Planetary Valley is in Libya, but it's right next to Algeria. And I'm going to be talking a lot about the Tassil Najir National Park. I wouldn't call it a forest. I definitely wanted to insert the name and the location in Libya. So we'll, we'll show this. I mean, I've shown this a million times, but I've been looking at the Rashad structure since 2009. Um, today we're going to talk about um, a third mound set, these two right here, and the fact that they're aligned at the same ancient alignment. If I get back to the Rashad structure, it's going to be to look for this kind of thing. Now, I haven't seen this in real life. This is a photograph taken, um, and I got a copy of it. 
This is something from the very beginning. I won't get into that. This is something from Grand Hancock. He taught me that... And by the way, we just saw uh, Uncharted X do something, and he had a few of these in North America, but he didn't talk about some of these in South America. And look at Bluefish, 24,000 years old. There's a picture of some dolmen Anthony showed me. That's, um, I forgot his, Justice. This is Mauritania. A map that you can get that's a lot better than Google. Uh, me, meeting George Howard and Randall Carlson and Graham Hancock. This is a Facebook.com slash was this Atlantis. Something I created to share my screen pictures and have links available. So let's talk about that. This one here has it. So we can click right on there and it'll open up Google Earth right there at that location. Now sometimes I'd kind of change the angle, but that one is exactly the same. And the reason why I think this is important because this is South Africa, but you can see how this volcanic dike comes up and hits the mountain. It kind of seems like it stops right about here. I'm not going to say that it goes up and over, but it did rise up and it kind of rose up about here and then flattened out. And you can see that going across, and if you want to measure that, I'd say that that is under a mile. Not sure, but we can measure it just to kind of check these out. 10,000 feet. And that happens to be 1.9 miles, so it's 2 miles almost. Let's change it back to feet. Um, I actually was always looking more here. And this one is very short, I think, right? How far? And I'm going across the edge because it does too. It's about a thousand feet. Why do I say I do that? Because you can see the line. Now, it may have turned into a road. But you can see the line kind of going up and over, like right here as well. It doesn't look like it's a road, though. It doesn't look like people are driving over that. Another question I just recently was asking myself is, is it allowing a river to come through right there? Is there a breach of some sort, or was it possibly created that way to allow the water to come right through there? There's always an allowance of water. Look over here. This one seems like it's letting the water come out there. And there's a water tank. You might even try to tell me this is modern day. And I've always said, I could have done that. That's not even a mile right there. That's like, like three-fifths of a mile from this point. So this is like one-fifth of a mile and this is like one-fourth uh, of a mile I see the line though it, it seems like you see is that a road I mean why is that line going like that is that the road you can kind of see it's still attached there's a line going up to here so we have another look at that another line that I never show so there's another one right there and you can see the the subtlety in this this line that's been crossed there don't tell me that that was done by men. I mean, why would a human do that? It just doesn't make sense to me. But uh, anyways, and don't don't look at this and say that's part of it. Those are fences. Those are modern day fences right there. But this, I was trying to say, I could have done that in, in my lifetime maybe, or maybe in a year I could have created something like this. But honestly, we're talking about, um, again, let's measure just this part, a gully that is 542 that's like a tenth of a mile okay that's like a tenth of a mile and uh actually that's a that's a tenth of a mile exactly right there 280 or uh, right there 528 at a zero and that's how many feet are in a mile so i finally memorized it and uh you've got 5280 feet in a mile so that's a tenth of a mile across could i have done that in a lifetime Sure, I think I could have dug that with a shovel. By the way, you have two shorelines there. I never realized that. How many shorelines? No shorelines in here? Maybe the, right there a little bit. Thank you for that thumbs up. Who is that? Somebody else is watching. Okay, the reason why I'm showing this again today is because I kind of want to explain to you that these dikes, while unnatural, um, still around the world can be found. And South Africa is a great example. You can just kind of just go along South Africa very quickly without even thinking and zoom in and find a dike. I mean, I probably won't find any now because of the Murphy's Law rule. But 
I'm trying to see one. I mean, when you see escar escarpments like that, they're just so straight, right? What created that, and why does it seem to continue uh, through the lake? That's not one of the dikes, though. That doesn't really count. But I can show dikes all day long, and I can uh, get into these locations in South Africa and show you more than just that. Ancient mining, I feel like you see all these plateaus in South Africa and you wonder what happened to the top layer between these plateaus, just like in Utah. And then you get this color change when you enter into Lesotho. And there's so many things to see here. I don't want to talk about that again and again. So we're going to get out of here. But let's go back over to the Was This Atlantis because I do want to show you I put links in all these locations. This is, again, one of the top um, locations in the world for ancient mining, in my opinion. I mean, Sahara Desert's got it throughout. I can show you. I do like this spot. I do want to go here someday. And that's north. And you have a couple of little pools. They look so clear. That one looks a little mucky. But this one looks super clear. I'd love to dive into that. I mean, do you think they put chlorine in that one? I think the only chlorine is the sand itself. But this is in the middle of an ancient minefield. Sorry, mining field. Mining, quarrying, changing this earth. You find lines everywhere. That's not a dike. The dikes are completely different. Look at that. What's that? Looks like a mound. So that's a perfect circle right there. Why? And by the way, how wide is that? Is that wide enough to be a tumuli, a grave? It's 35, 34 foot wide, 33. So it's um, a little bit big for a grave. You can see these lines everywhere you go. And it looks like they almost polymorphized the, or um, polymered, geopolymered the, the top. Did they grind that down or did they melt it now i've been looking at stuff all day long here so first let me show you what i found in utah and and then we'll we'll get back to that it's in it's in the thing though you can find it here let's uh let's go to it we'll find it there's stuff that i've been putting on all day long mines dikes look at this snake in the same spot i'm at now not in utah in tassil najir park just these weird dikes everywhere you go. That's Australia. That's South Africa. These are the Giants Mines. Uh, this one, I believe, is actually not in the Rashad structure area. I could be wrong, but I double-checked. I think that's Tassil Najir in Algeria. This is Utah. And this is uh, the same type of uh, crisscross pattern that I've been finding everywhere. And... Uh, if I didn't see these ancient lines in South America, and sorry, sorry, South Africa, I probably would have never thought what I'm looking at in Utah could have been created by unnatural ways. But when it cut to, you know, those those right there, the the 90 degree angled mountain that actually gutterizes and turns into a gutter. These gutters are part of it. Like people think that they're uh, track marks. They're too big for that. What you find in Malta is only a f six feet wide. But this is like 150 feet wide. Look at that one. This is one of my favorites. The triangles that you get inside there. This triangle here. There's no way that that's a natural thing. It's a obviously created. Intelligently created. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, didn't find what I was trying to show you, which was the mounds. So I'm going to go back to the mounds and show you where we are. As you can see here, we are um, in Utah. And if you know this area, I'm going to put it right down here. You can see Moab up at the top. So there's the mounds I'm talking about. They're right kind of south of Moab. This is the Colorado River and the um, Green River has a confluence right here right where that happens uh, there's some very questionable um, stretch marks on the land and this this whole area by the way down here none of these 
things exist. So I think that this might have been the mined area. And they threw all their stuff into the water and cleared it out. But I didn't really want to bring you there for that. Um, going back over here, south of Moab, so it's right there. You see these two mounds. One of them is called South Six Shooter Peak. Well, I've shown you the mound that exists in... Okay, so let's let's ch talk about this really quick. Um, you see mound number one, mound number two, and we can change the perspective here and look at those mounds. I mean, they're on these plateaus. Were they put there? I believe they were put there. Were they put there before the plateau became a plateau or were they separated? We got lucky that this wasn't removed by water or maybe mining who knows I, I think there may have been some mining going on in here but um it does look pretty natural to me so i i don't really chase stuff that looks natural you can see a couple of shorelines in there but uh, let's take a look at one other thing about these two mounds and that's first we'll go north and put it on 2d and zoom out so we can see the angle here is kind of 45 degrees to the the north Sorry, the Northwest. Actually, I probably want to change the name because I was saying Northeast because I'm talking about where the compass points. So I should probably think about changing that. Northwest was the previous axis. This is uh, when they're aligned and facing uh, up, which is not north. Take a look down there. It's more of Northeast. But when you go in here and you look at this little dike, that happens to be coming right off the north side. I mean, if you want to um, angle it like that, uh, that would be still almost the same 45 degree angle to the northeast, but it doesn't seem to align with the mound across the way. So I'm going to uh, ignore that call. Okay, getting distractions. I told you I'm going to turn off that phone next time. I'm going to. Sorry about that. Let me uh, just silence this phone. Sorry about that. Just going to turn this thing off. <clears throat> okay. There we go. So going back to this, this is the main thing. Um, we've got the same, the same angle here. Now let's go up down to what I wanted to show you in... And I kind of have to go back to north to find it in the Grand Canyon. And when you go to the Grand Canyon, you can go to this mound here. Now, this mound is actually the same angle as that mound, right? So if I put this straight up, you, you look, yeah, you might say, I mean, you be the judge. You be the judge. If I put these two and if I find the center right there, which I think, and this is saddled together. I mean, we can look at this and kind of decide for yourself. Let's also uh, check the distance um, between the two points. That's a six, oh wow, almost 600 perfect feet, right? Look at that. I love it. I mean, 600 feet exactly. Does that have any significance? And of course, you can see one is higher than the other, right? We don't have a really good angle it does show it saddles out in the middle and almost perfectly in the middle too i um i'm gonna go back let's go back to the utah one now there's a lot of stuff going on right there but we're gonna go back to the utah one and we're going to uh Can I get it? Can I get it? Am I that good? There we go. Almost got it. And let's uh, measure this distance between these two right here. What's the distance between this point and that point? Oh, that's a lot more different, right? That's 8,000 feet. Almost perfectly 8,000 feet. I'd like to go in there and uh, see how close to the center I can get that. I mean, it kind of looks like this is the center right there. And this right here, not quite 8,000 feet. I don't think I can justify um, making it farther apart than that. 
Also, another thing I'd like to point out is that you can easily see now that that dike doesn't align with the other mound. But it does seem to be going towards the middle of this plateau. So why that dike is there, I don't know. But I don't believe in my heart that this is a volcano. Hope you can't hear those gardeners. I mean, it's 110 degrees outside and they're out there gardening. They're crazy. They're crazy. Okay, so if you ask me, well, what about that third one? Well, I uh, was showing you the one in the Rashat structure. So we'll go there right now. And uh, so we have three now. Three equally aligned. They were, they're aligned to the northwest, which implies maybe a northeastern, um, northeast would be like the, uh, the, the ancient upright north pole. I, I don't know how to describe that. Not that good. I know how to say trivergence, but that's about all I can do. Okay, let's go to that last one. Um, the last one was in the Rashad structure, so we'll go there real quick. I actually was right there. I went there, and if, if you look at the Rashad structure, um, we're not talking about really the, the concentric circle. I'm talking about the Adrar Plateau over here near Chingeti, but even farther over. You immediately see this Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You see these two parallel canals. I walked through this one here. But when you get over here, you also have the nose of the reindeer. You can see the quarry lines. And you can see that there's two mounds. One is down here that's been bisected. And uh, this has been bisected. So was this their ancient east-west? And was this um, possibly, let's turn it, so they're going straight up. Okay. Um, kind of hard to see with this one it being so hard. So, so uh, let's uh, measure the distance between the points. I think that's kind of like the middle of this one and the middle of this one is here. Do you notice how precise this is where the this bisection line goes on the north side of this one and on the south side of this one? Now, if I get this line aligned here, right about there, you can see it's the same alignment. It's the same axial alignment. So that was the point of this video. There's a lot more that I can show you. And this one right here, by the way, these tumuli in Morocco are the wider ones I mentioned. I think if they were burials, there might be something buried right here. You got to dig right there. You can see the one that got washed away. I showed this like four years ago. You can see the antennae of this one are whole and they're they're so big. But over here, it's like the head, the antennae, uh, the, it's actually washed out because you can see it, this part right here is what's left over. So the tip, if you've got a body in there, that part is definitely washed away. What happened to it? Well, it flooded down the, the river in this new flood zone. Okay, uh, let's see here. What am I showing next? I'm showing you, that's Tassil Najer, that's Planetary Valley, that's Algeria, and that's Libya. Everything up here, there's a bunch of stuff up here as well. There's all sorts of quarries that are in this area that I can show you. This one right here is in Mauritania. It's, if it's not Mauritania, it's just above Mauritania. And these lines, I mean, they're just like the ones you see in Utah. Not exactly the same. Lots of different projects have lots of different non-similar attributes. And I can show you these different projects. Until next time, keep asking questions and keep searching for those hidden connections because you never know where they might lead. Stop what you're doing and subscribe immediately to David Stig Hansen's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at Stig. If you're interested in uncovering one of the greatest mysteries in history, this is the place to be. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button right now. After you've subscribed, make sure to like and share the videos to help spread this groundbreaking information. David Stig Hansen has taken three expeditions to the Richat structure, also known as the Eye of the Sahara. This massive, 
25 kilometer wide bullseye formation located deep within the Sahara Desert is one of the most intriguing and debated natural formations on Earth.